We'll soon be carried away. This is why you need the Holy Ghost for real. You know why you need him? Because God says you're going to need him to discern who is real and ain't real. You know why? Because he says Satan has transformed himself as an angel of light. But what will the Holy Spirit help you to do? He says, and you shall know them by their fruit. Faith Touch. I'm Apostle Falman A. Ferguson and I'm so delighted, my friends, that you're able to tune in to us again on today. Well, I want to decree that this is your time and your season for the glory of God to be revealed in you. I'm excited. We are at the final Sunday in the month of April and God has been doing such an awesome thing in this month. Well, listen, we are one Sunday post-resurrection. <laughs> listen, friends, I tell you, I believe that this is indeed the season uh, for harvest. You remember the Lord said, say not that there are four months and then comes harvest. But he says, I say to you now, lift up your eyes and look for the fields are white and ready for harvest. I believe that you are in a season of manifestation based on the understanding that you have of the seasons that you're in. God says to everything that there is a season a time for every purpose under the heaven. I believe, my brothers and sisters, that these seasons come to pass in your life when you have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit within you. Listen, I, you know, this is a year for us in which we are talking about advancing the kingdom of God with a deeper understanding. I believe, my brothers and sisters, like never before, that there comes a season in your life when everything shifts based on the understanding that you have. You, you remember what the Word of God says. Wisdom is the principal thing, but in all thy getting, get understanding. Look, this is your time and your season. I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is shifting things in the lives of believers who understand who they are and whose they are. Well, I want you to call a friend Tell them Faith Touches on the air. You don't want to miss this message excerpt on today, Understanding the Power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be right back with you after this short message excerpt on today. God bless you, eh? Many people, even in the body of Christ, do not understand the magnitude of the purpose and power of the Holy Ghost. You hear what I just said? Thus what happens is uh, the church is falling short because of a lack of understanding. I believe that God is calling for a church now who, who are going to operate in a deeper realm of understanding so that his glory might be manifest in the midst of the people. It is important for us to understand, my brothers and sisters, that the Holy Spirit, it is said that, and there are some who dispute this because uh, they say, well, there, there's a division in the body of Christ. There's, there's those of us who believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, three distinct persons that make one. And then there are those who, who believe 
Brothers and sisters, there is only one God. There is only one God represented as Father, as Son, and Holy Spirit. Whichever one you believe really doesn't matter to me. What is important is you understand the power of the Holy Spirit. And I, I can agree, I can show you, uh, brothers and sisters, for some of those who believe in the Trinity, with our scriptures that would cause you to believe such. And then I can show you on the other side, where brothers and sisters, where there are scriptures that support the oneness of God. Represented. Represented in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I got scriptures today. I ain't, I, I ain't struggling with that. But, but br brothers and sisters, what is important for us to understand is that the Holy Spirit is not just a happenstance. He's not just, brothers and sisters, he's not just a, a, an agent that God has sent into the earth after Jesus came. The Holy Spirit was present, my brothers and sisters, in the very beginning. Genesis 1 will tell you that uh, the earth was without form and void. I don't even have to go there. Darkness was on the face of the deep. But watch what it says. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. But the word tells us, brothers and sisters, that God's spirit, God's spirit would come into the earth in fullness. There are those, let me say, there are those who, who experienced the power of God's spirit who were chosen and selected men. For example, for example, the Spirit of the Lord, brothers and sisters, came upon Samuel. He was selected. He was appointed by God to be a prophet. The Spirit of the Lord rested on Nathan. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David and departed from Saul. And if those who know the story concerning Saul would, understand, would know that when Saul, when Saul was appointed king, and he had no idea that he was, he was selected by God. He was looking for his father's three donkeys. Only to discover, brothers and sisters, after three days of searching and feeling like it was all over, he was told, go see a seer in the city. A seer uh, who would tell you just where your donkey is. His name was... His name was Samuel. The Bible says that Samuel invited him to a feast. And he says, stay, go up, go up. Because there's a feast waiting for you. And ain't nothing going to happen until you get there. I need somebody to hear me this day, today. That there are some things that are not going to happen until you get there. But you need the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. And so when he went up, Pastor Strong, he went up. And, and, the, and the feast began. And then the Bible says, on the next day, the prophet told him just where his donkeys was. He says, the donkeys you're looking for, they already found. Not to worry, your father is worried. Go on now. Go on. And the Bible says, as he was going, Minister Iris Walks Dean, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samuel, and he, he, he became another man, and he prophesied. Ah, Lord, I didn't plan to go through all this right now. He prophesied. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, get ready the Holy Ghost. It's going to cost you to prophesy. I just want to do something real quick. And so, on selected men and women of God in the Old Testament, the Spirit of the Lord would be upon them. Only a select few. But brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, hallelujah, that God had another plan. Let's investigate. Let's investigate. Hallelujah. Let's go, go to the next slide and let's go to Joel chapter 2. 
The Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, is important for our ministry. He is important, brothers and sisters, in the earth. We need to understand the Father who is in heaven, who sent his Son to die for us, and those of us who know that Jesus had to take on human flesh, Paul records it and says it like this, and when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, that he may redeem us, he was born under the law that he might redeem us from the curse of the law. And, and the word tells us that when Jesus, in the fullness of time, Minister Marissa, in the fullness of time after he was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, the Bible says immediately there descended upon him in the form of a dove, the Spirit of the Lord. And after being baptized, the word of the Lord tells us that he was, he was carried into the wilderness, that he may fast for 40 days, and afterwards he was tempted. The word of the Lord tells us or is trying to give us revelation of the importance of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, as we seek to serve the Lord and to advance the kingdom of God. Each one, as we understand, the Father being our God, the, the Father being our God, sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins, and the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of a promise. Here it is. Job, Job chapter 2, verse 28 to verse 29. Here's what it says. And it shall come to pass afterward that I would pour out my spirit on all flesh. God say, God say, ain't no select few now. I'm turning this thing. I'm turning this thing into a manifestation that everybody who wants it, brothers and sisters, can enjoy it. He says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall what? Dream dreams. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready to prophesy. For some of y'all, I'm going to tell you, get ready to dream dreams. Yeah, because some of us old before we young. He said, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And watch what it says. And also my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. The Holy Spirit is necessary for our ministry. Now, now I should point out to you, and, I, and I, the first slide says, promise of, from the Father. Prophecy, visions, dreams. Just so I don't mess up this sermon, go back to slide number one now. Go back to the next slide, just above this. Go back to the next slide. The prophet Isaiah got a revelation, brothers and sisters, of the Holy Spirit. He got a revelation that's important for all of us. What am I trying to tell you? In this day and time, if you and I are not desiring to have what God desires in the earth realm, you're going to live beneath your privilege. Now here's the prophetic word concerning Jesus. So when it came to pass on him, it was no, it was no happenstance. This was all purpose. This was all purpose. Purpose is the reason why a thing exists. Look at what Isaiah 11 and verse 2 says. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And then he does something next. He begins, my brothers and sisters, he begins to give us a, an understanding that the spirit of the Lord has many names. Some write that there are some 32 different names, all indicating the function of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the purpose and the power. This entire slide will focus on purpose and power. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. 
many names. We know the Holy Ghost, my brothers and sisters, uh, one of the names translated for the Holy Ghost is the paracleto, or the paraclete, which comes from the word parakletos, helper, comforter, many names out there. But I'm going to show you some of those names, and I'm going to show you some of the purpose of why each one of us must desire after the Holy Ghost this year. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Talking about Jesus. Wait a minute. Jesus need the Holy Ghost? Jesus needed the Holy Spirit? Okay, let's explain. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus came into the earth, he came as man. Is that not right? And if you are in flesh, you need the Holy Ghost. Though he was the son of God, he came as man. Are you all here? He came as man. Jesus needed the Holy Ghost. The word next thing it says, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Here's there. Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. Read on quick. The spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. Right here we see four different names. Four different functions. Let's go to, to the next slide. Go to the next one. All right. Jesus now confirms after his ministry, brothers and sisters, his ministry is coming to an end in Luke, Luke chapter 24, and he's getting ready to leave. Jesus says, listen here. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Look at this, my children. Jesus confirms Joel. He confirms Joel chapter 2. He confirms the promise. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor. Whatever you do, hold fast to the promise of God. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, the enemy takes us out of the promises of God and causes us to start doubting. But you need to know, my brothers and sisters, if God said it, it shall come to pass. Are you all hearing what I'm telling you? If God said it, it shall come to pass. Jesus confirms the promise, but here is what he requires of us. As believers, he says, I need you to wait. Tarry and wait for it. One of the struggles of the Christian church and human beings in general is we don't know how to wait. We don't know how to wait. What does this do? What does it cause us? It causes us to make major decisions in only temporary environments. The Holy Ghost aids us so that even when we are seeking to make decisions, don't worry, I'm going to show it to you right now. He says, wait for the power. Wait until you are endued with power from on high. What is he talking about? He is telling us that when the Holy Ghost comes, then comes the power. Are y'all in the room? Let's go. Next slide. Next slide. Hallelujah. And so the, 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 word, the, the scripture shows us that when he comes, here's what Jesus says. Jesus speaking again to his disciples. He says, he says in John 14 verse 16, and I will pray the Father. He's telling them now. You remember in, the, in verse 1 he tells them, don't let yourself be troubled. Don't let yourself get caught up in this world. Don't be troubled, man. I'm going back, and I'm going to prepare a mansion for you that where I am, there you're going to be also. But until that time, this is what happens in verse number 16. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. I hear that. He may abide with you forever. Song to me, like Emmanuel. God with us. God is going to be with us forever. That he may want abide with you forever. The spirit of what? Truth. Everybody see? The spirit of truth. We're going to see that. The spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. But it, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now that's amazing. 
That's amazing. Jesus telling them that the world mm, cannot receive. Now, if the world cannot receive and we are given the mandate to receive him, I'm just asking him, asking you, do you have him today? Here's what he says. And he will be a helper. Uh, the King James um, calls it comforter. He will comfort us. He will be our helper. What else will he be? The word of God says, and the spirit of truth. Here's another name. Here's another function. The spirit of truth. Now, if you're taking, if you're taking notes and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you see, I don't have how many names you, I'm just telling you, I don't have them in one, two, three, four, five, six. Right here, we're looking at two. He is a helper. All of us knows what helpers does. All the masons know what a helper is. All carpenters know what a helper is. <laughs> Just trying to keep it simple. Then the spirit of truth. And I love this. Why the spirit of truth? Who abides with us forever? Why the spirit of truth? Because you know we're dealing with so much people and so much things. Everybody have to determine what is truth. Nowadays, almost anything is truth. Come on, y'all, talk to me. You know what I'm saying. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost to discern what is truth, the foolishness that is coming from the pulpit, hello? We'll soon be carried away. This is why you need the Holy Ghost for real. You know why you need him? Because God says you're going to need him to discern who is real and ain't real. You know why? Because he says Satan has transformed himself as an angel of light. But what will the Holy Spirit help you to do? He says, and you shall know them by their fruit. Hello, somebody. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the next screen, man. Let's go to the next screen. John 14, verse 26. Again, Jesus repeats. He says, but the help of the Holy Ghost. The help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said. And this is important because brothers and sisters, you got to be careful who teaching you today. Listen to me, y'all. Why is it important to have the Holy Ghost? Why is it important? Because even while I teach in right now, Lady Shelley, Pastor D, you got to have the Holy Ghost to know if what I'm saying is true. Hello, somebody. You're writing down and you need the Holy Spirit. Sometimes some difficult things going to be said and, and you ain't sure. Hello. You need the Holy Ghost to confirm. Yes, the servant of the Lord has got it right. Don't. Don't take this light. Jesus said, here's another powerful thing that the Holy Ghost is going to do for you. So not only is the Holy Ghost going to be your teacher, that's why I want to help some of y'all. That some of y'all will operate in a more stronger manner than those who went to school and got the degree. Oh, ain't nobody heard what I just said. The Holy Ghost will give you. Ain't nobody, come on, man, come on, man, talk to me, somebody. Anybody in here is a witness of what I'm saying. Hey, 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 come on, Bishop. I know what I'm saying. Come on, Minister Raman. I know what I'm saying. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. They're going to soon be asking you, where did you go to school? Huh? What's the next part? He not only teaches you all things, but he reminds us. Lord, I need remembrance now. I need remembrance because Lord help us. Hello. Hello. What is he trying to tell you is that when you out and you're trying to witness for the Lord and you get up to preach and to tell the good news of the gospel, the Holy Spirit say, I can remind you. Are you all hearing what I'm telling you? He'll bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. It's got to be what Jesus is saying now. No, no, the Holy Ghost ain't going to remind you of how someone hurt you 20 years ago. If that happened, then die in the Holy Ghost. Here's the next thing that the Holy Ghost is, is uh, assigned to do. 
Here's a part of his function. Jesus is, is telling us. All right? John 16, verse 13 and 14. However, he, the spirit of truth, has come. Sorry, let me read it again. However, when he, the spirit of truth, we already discover he is the spirit of truth. You ain't got to worry. In the spirit of truth, I love talking to him. I love when he talks to me. I love, because being in his presence, I don't have to struggle. When the spirit of truth has come, here's what happens. He will guide you into all truth. He said, you don't have to worry because there are some maids out there. There are some fellas out there. There are some spirits and teachings out there that song really good. And God knows if you ain't know no better, you're lost. Wow, I hope you've enjoyed that message excerpt on today. And if you would like that message in its entirety, please call our media department at 341-0502 or 341-0319. We'll be delighted to get it right out to you. I believe, my friends, that this message is going to transform your life. Now, friends, if you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want to agree right now with you that God will fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, ask, and if you ask, you shall receive. Come on, would you do that? Father, in the name of Jesus, my brother, my sister, Father God is desiring the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Will you fill them right now? I call forth the manifestation of your power. In the name of Jesus, may your glory be revealed over their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, friends, I believe that those of you who receive the power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, will get guidance. You will have the presence of God's anointed power resting on you. God says, the Holy Spirit will even show you things to come. Listen, man, it's your time and your season for God's glory to be revealed in your life. Until next time, this is Apostle Falman A. Ferguson saying, this is our year of onward, upward, together. God bless. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority. This is what I love. Whatever he hears, he speaks. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. He functions under authority. He speaks what he hears. Listen to me. He speaks what he hears. Hello. Everybody tell your neighbor, neighbor. Only speak what you hear. The spirit told me. If the spirit ain't tell you, but you better shut your mouth. Just say, I have a feeling. That's why we are told, he who have an ear to hear, what happens? Let him hear what? What the Spirit says to the church. Thank you for listening to our program today. For prayer, counseling, or encouragement, please call us, 341-0502. Send us an email, united.faith at yahoo.com. Or like us on Facebook, United Faith Ministries International. We would be delighted to hear from you. Wishing to join us? Meet us at our sanctuary at number 126 Fire Trail Road East every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for our morning glory worship service and 10.30 a.m. for our divine worship service. For all other service times and broadcast schedules, please visit our website, www.ufmi.org. On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Falman Ferguson, and the family of United Faith Ministries International, thank you for sharing with us. Join us next week right here on this station, and may the Word of God richly dwell in you.